humpback chub, a name most fitting this unique fish. Hi, what's going on adventure buddies? My name is Brandon Ringstad, and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Happy New Year! 2021 is here. It started off a little rocky for my family and myself, mainly because I was diagnosed with Bell's Palsy two weeks ago. Now, for those who don't know, and even myself, I didn't know, uh, Bell's Palsy is the partial paralysis of half your face. So what it was is it's a nerve that got pinched that's going from outside of my brain out around to the muscles in my face. It got pinched and shut off. So half of my face really wasn't working very well. Um, but I am recovering. I was on medication. The medication didn't make me feel very good and it was pretty awful. Um, the side effects of or the the effects of this Bell's palsy really reminded me of a stroke. Um, I for a while the medication and my body were very tired. I had issues with my memory for a while there and some of the side effects that some of the medication I was on really weren't that great so I just waited until I was feeling better enough to make this video for you. I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who prayed for me or send me your healing thoughts, healing vibes, uh, whatever it was in your thoughts, uh, your prayers. I'm so thankful that I have a community like you who can support me through this while I recover. Now recovery might take uh, anywhere between a month and two months. Um, I'm not really sure, but I'm already better than I was. and. I just, uh, you know, something like that, it's, it's pretty scary. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much for being with me um, with this wild ride. And please make sure to stick around to the very end to hear about this month's charity opportunity. Today we'll discover the raging canyon waters of the humpback chub. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Gila Saifa are known as humpback chub. They are a large minnow species. These are some funny fish. That is why I chose them. I saw it and I thought that the body form is hilarious. Let's get into it. They are a freshwater benthopelagic fish found in fast moving rivers. Benthopelagic is an area of water closer to the bottom and mid water. The interesting thing about this fish is it is found in roughly six populations in the Colorado River ranging from Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona. The largest population is found in the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Their habitat preference is canyon-locked, fast-moving rivers. Juveniles like slower-paced water where they can hang out near the shore. This helps them find cover and keeps them safe from flowing downstream. As they grow and age, they move into deeper and faster-moving water. Humpback chub are an old species of fish. It has led them to modifying their body shape to adapt to the forces of water moving against their body. So how am I going to capture this cramped, fast moving water feeling that they would have in the wild? I block out my subject. I use the golden ratio to measure out the best position for my focus. Once I have that, I can start on my block in phase. I am learning a new style with three phases to my paintings. Step one is blocking in. Se second is modeling. Then the last step is detail. I grab average colors and values. This helps me with my mid-tones. I want to work from the farthest thing in my painting to the closest. That way, once I'm finished, I can move on to the next closest thing in the painting. I use larger brushes and loose, thin strokes for blocking in phase. I want the paint to be thin so that raised details don't show up later. 
Once my blocking in phase is complete, I can move on to modeling. This is where I play with tones and textures. I am also going to set my darks. Don't be afraid of dark darks and light lights. I prefer leaving my highlights for the detail phase. Let's move on to our next phase of the adventure. What are we looking for when identifying the humpback chub? When doing research about this fish, I found out that they are a rare and large minnow. They aren't the largest minnow, but a 2.4 pound minnow that can reach 38 centimeters at fork length is big. These fish have a unique appearance. They are designed to be efficient in fast moving turbulent water. They have a small head, big hump on their dorsal surface, large thin fins, forked caudal peduncle, and are laterally compressed. Let's break this up a bit. Let's start with their head. It looks tiny in comparison to their body. They have a large protruding upper jaw. The edge of their mouth ends at the front of their eyes. Their eyes are relatively high on the head. Behind their head is a large hump that acts to catch and direct water across the body. It is like a bulbous bow on a large ship. The fish I saw didn't have a well-defined hump when I saw it. Their dorsal fin is in the center mass of the body. It is tall and thin for stability. Then as the body transitions to the caudal fin, it gets thin and round, kind of like a pencil. This is to minimize drag. The caudal or tail fin is deeply forked. These fish need great bursts of speed and need to clear the current in order to stay in one spot or to move forward. A flat tail fin might get caught in a current and pull the fish downstream. This fish has few scales and is relatively smooth. The scales are mainly found near the lateral line. The lateral line is a sensory organ that helps detect pressure and movement along the sides of the fish. Humpback chub are dark olive on their dorsal surface and bright silver on their stomach and sides. The fins can be light yellow to orange yellow. I couldn't find too much research done on behaviors of this fish. They don't do anything too crazy except swim in fast moving water. If somebody wants to study this fish and let me know what you find, that would be so cool. What do humpback chub eat and how are they doing? From what I could dig up, I found that they eat invertebrates and small fishes. Juveniles primarily eat invertebrates. They're, they can eat terrestrial bugs, insects, and some small aquatic invertebrates. As they grow, they can eat small fish as well. And that's it. That's all I found. There isn't a ton of information on this fish. There are plenty of papers and resources, but they all kind of say the same thing. So how are the humpback chub doing? The IUCN red list has them listed as endangered. The population trend is stable as of 2008. This study was conducted in December of 2012. The numbers are just low. They are only an estimated six to 10,000 fish in the Grand Canyon watershed. The hard thing for this fish is the population isolation. There are only six populations of fish in the world. Each population is isolated from the other populations. The presence of dams where fish passage is not present makes this hard to fix. I like hydroelectric dams. I live in Washington state and most of our energy comes from dams. The, the problem is the technology for cross river dams where passage for fish is not present. If there is a channel or infrastructure for fish passage, I love that. I also like the new types of hydroelectric plants that don't cut off a river. They sit on a curve in the river and catch water energy as it turns. 
This leaves the river open and catches wasted energy from friction in, as it changes in momentum. I have seen a few of these power plants pop up and I think they're really smart. I love seeing technology that works with nature instead of working against it or interferes with it. When the modeling phase is complete, I can move on to my detail phase. I use smaller and finer brushes to make marks on the canvas. I can, I can also start applying my highlights. This gives the subject a play with light. I really like when a painting plays with light. It means it changes depending on the time of day and where the painting is located. I can start using titanium white in my color mixing instead of mixing white. I love using my mixing white to get realistic tones. It is more transparent and doesn't blow out the exposure of the paints. It means I can get subtle color differences easier. When I use titanium white to mix, it makes the color vivid, but is easily blown out in the value. I also use pure titanium white for tiny details that catch light. I also try and make it stick up from the canvas to catch real light from the environment. Okay, so what was my experience with the humpback chub? I saw this fish at the Odyssey during my trip to Arizona. It was a different looking fish. I had no idea what it was. I really enjoyed my visit to the aquarium. There were so many fish and animals I have never seen before. It was all so new to me. I love finding fish that catch my attention. I don't know why, I just love it. Most people don't care this much about fish or sea creatures, but I do. This fish was in a tank with a slight current to it. It was near some rocks and logs with bubbles churning near the surface. The facility did a wonderful job creating a realistic habitat for this fish. It was with other fish species. I didn't know what they were either, but we'll discover some of those in a later adventure. I want to capture this funny little fish. I wanted to give you a good laugh. We all need content that can make us laugh. I know that this hasn't been the funniest of content that I have made today in this adventure. I could make jokes about its appearance, like it looks like a capsized boat, or make a joke about how I thought this video was on humpback whales, but it turned out to be a silly little fish. But I don't think it does this fish justice. The more time I've spent looking at it, the better I like it. It is a mastercraft of style and hasn't changed for millions of years. It was created a long time ago, but its body gives it an advantage. So instead of making jokes about its appearance, I will let this fish off the hook. I think that we can learn to be less critical of others' appearances. As the final details come into focus, I hope it captures the crazy, chaotic, fast-paced waters of the humpback chub. This painting is finished, what do you think? I really like how it turned out. I like that I can change the background of a painting uh, just to suit anything that I feel. My confidence and my abilities are really growing. I'm really having fun with this series for you. And I hope you enjoy. If you would like to subscribe and ring the notification bell to support this community and help it grow, I would really appreciate that. I do my best to post new content every other weekend but sometimes things get in the way. This month I am helping my local master's swimming committee. Now, if you don't know, I have been a competitive swimmer for about 16 years. I took a little bit of break after college and got right back into it. I'm a coach, I swim myself, 
and I love the sport. So I love getting people into the water, getting them active, making them more confident in themselves. It's just something really fun for me. I'm, I'm helping the organization that's helped me with my physical health as well as my mental health. I feel more organized and ready for the day after I swim. I swim for about an hour in the mornings and I really love it. I love the community, I love the people, I love just the growth that I can see in people. It's really amazing. It's also fairly easy on your body if you're doing it correctly. So if you would like to help, I will leave a link down below. Did you know that portions of all of my sales goes towards charity? It's true. When I sell a piece, portions of that sale go towards charity. I sell the art that I create for these as originals and prints. I have G Clay Prints, they're museum quality prints. So the company that I use was known as Fine Balance Imaging. They changed their name this year to Feather and Fox Print Company. They're on Whidbey Island and they're just lovely, lovely people. I've been doing a lot of work with them and they do such amazing quality. So in my originals, I try and use glitter, pearlescence, and glass bead gel medium to play with light and their surrounding. It really ties in the art into the space in which it's hanging. For my prints, they, I offer two options. I have a limited run and an unlimited run. So my limited run is going to be unique. They're going to be as close to the original as possible, as possible. and my unlimited run will not have these. These are my cheaper options for you. They're still beautiful. You can frame them and hang them up in your house. I also sell greeting cards and final stickers. I'm also working on a few items that I'm going to reveal in just like a uh, update video next week. So by supporting this channel, you're not only supporting charity, you're supporting two local businesses. Thank you so much for watching. Spread love, curiosity, and creativity. I've been Brandon, and I will see you in our next adventure.